we're going to look at how to create manipulatives that we can then use in a remote synchronous lesson. We're going to make manipulatives in Google Drive and then put those, or in Google Slides, and then put those Google Slides into a Nearpod so that you can teach a live synchronous lesson and watch students work with manipulatives while you are teaching. So we have a Google Slide here that has the uh, number sentence already written at the top. It already has a uh, number bond from a screenshot that I just dragged into the slide and then I put a space for students to write their name at the top. That's going to be important a little bit later. The type of manipulative we want to work with is counters in a 10 frame. So first I'm going to make my counters. So I'm going to pick a shape, a little circle. We'll do some red counters. So we'll fill that red and then we'll do some blue counters, but first we'll do these. Um, actually, let's do our blue ones too. So another circle. This one's going to be the blue counter is about the same size. And now we're going to click on one of them and I'm going to go command D, make a big long line of lots of counters. I'm going to move this blue one out of the way for a minute. And I'm going to select all of these, right click or control click, align them horizontally in the center, align them vertically in the middle. Now I have a stack. I'll put those back up here. I'll do the same thing with the blue counters. Control or Command D to duplicate. Draw that. Align it horizontally. Align it vertically. Now I have a stack of those two. If these get ungrouped, and now I try to move the stack and I move one at a time, instead of clicking on them, I just need to drag around them and that will regroup them. And now I can move them up here. So I have a big stack of counters that kids can move around and count with. Now I'm going to put the 10 frame in. So I captured a screenshot of a 10 frame. I'm just going to drag that in here. Because you're going to be putting counters on top of it, we want to make sure that we order this. So I'm going to right click, order, send to the back. Now the 10 frames in the back, now it won't get confusing when I start to drag things into it and then drag things back out of it. So now we have the slide that we want to work with. We need a slide like this for every one of the students. So I'm going to click over here and I'm going to do the same duplicate trick. I'm going to Command D and I'm going to make 20 slides for my 20 students. And when they come in, they will put their name into it and then I'll be able to see them all. You can go to View and Grid View and now I can see lots of student work all at once. I can see all these students working at the same time just by scrolling up and down. And as they're working on it, I'll be able to see the counting that they're doing. So if I go back to my regular view, and I was on this slide, and they did this, when I was in my grid view, I could see that the first student has put one counter in. I can see what each student is doing. So I'm going to go back to my regular view, put that back. And so these are ready to go. Now I want to put it into a Nearpod lesson. So if I go to Nearpod, I'm going to pick a lesson that I already have and I'm going to edit it. Oh, this isn't going to work because this one's made in Google Slide. We'll do a new Nearpod lesson. You could do it in Google Slide. You have to add, add web content, but it's going to get a little bit more confusing. So for the sake of this, we're going to create a new Nearpod lesson. And I'm just going to put one slide into it. So the slide that I'll put in will be web content. And now I'm going to put a URL in. The URL is going to be this document. I want to make sure that the sharing permissions are to anyone. 
anyone can edit. That's good. I'm going to copy the link. And then I'm going to put it in here. Save it. And now that's what students will be able to work on. So I'll show you what that looks like in the student view. If I create this, and then I'll launch it. Capture the link. And now we'll be able to see what it looks like for a student. So I put the link in. And here's a student working through this lesson. So that's the student view. Teacher view is here. And again, I can just, this is in Nearpod now. I can still go to grid view and I can still see everything. So if I'm a student and I'm working, I'm going to put in seven counters. And if I am the teacher, as a student is doing that, remember this is still in Nearpod. I'm, I'm in that Nearpod slide. I can see in Nearpod, the student has put in seven counters, so I can watch what they're doing. We'll do one more example. Going back to a different Google slide, in this one I made toothpicks and counting cubes. I did the exact same thing. I made little lines. You'll see that these are actually stacks. So all of these are stacks. And then these are stack of cubes. So same exact thing. I can make sure that I put names here so that I can see each one. In. And then again, I will just create duplicates. And I'll be able to see students working with those manipulatives. And I can always check the sharing, make sure that it can be shared with anyone and is editable. Copy the link. And I can add it into my Nearpod lesson. I would have to edit this lesson. Add a slide, web content, URL. And now there's another set of manipulatives that they can use when I launch that lesson. You'll be able to see it on the student side.